Let me show you how to make an abstract acrylic painting using just three colors of paint and an easy art composition technique called the roll of thirds. Watch as I go through the process step by step, making it easy for you to follow along. I'll demonstrate with a range of tools and paint, and you'll see that inexpensive tools and paints can produce high quality results. And once I've completed the first painting, I'll demonstrate how I mix things up a bit with a few more advanced techniques, while still using the same three colors of paint and keeping in mind the rule of thirds. Finally, I'll demonstrate how I use the Magic Viewfinder to hone in on the final composition for both paintings. Is there such a thing as a best composition? Watch till the end and decide for yourself. What we're going to be using for this morning is three different qualities and three different colors of acrylic paint. The first here is Holbein Acrylic Thalo Green, and that's an artist quality paint. The second one is Liquitex Basics. This is yellow ochre, and it is a student grade acrylic paint. The third one is Cream Coat Black, and this is a craft paint. The Cream Coat Black runs around $2, the Acrylic Basics around $6, and the Thalo Green uh, Holbein is around $12 or $15 for a tube. The main difference in these paints is that the Artist Quality paint has a lot more pigment in it. And so you have to watch when you mix the paints to make sure that you're mixing less green than you are of the other two colors when you mix them together. The other thing we're going to be using instead of brushes is putty knives. And these essentially function as very wide and very inexpensive palette knives. This is a plastic seedling label. I had a whole bunch extra of these, so I thought I'd try them out and see how they work as palette knives, and they work just fine. And here we have a ceramic rib with that serrated on the edges, and we'll be using that as well. I've also many times used the flat edge of this as a palette knife for painting. For mixing the paint, I'm gonna be using a brush and an old palette knife that's kind of broken, but it functions just fine. We won't be using these for painting, just for mixing the paint. I like the way that the, the brush mixes the paint and it gets everything very thoroughly mixed and it gives it to a nice creamy texture. Also necessary, of course, is water for mixing the brushes. And I always use two containers of water. One to get everything nice and muddy and do the first rinse, and then the second to clean it off even further. And then of course, I have my old rag to dry things off. For paper, I'm using some leftover pieces of 180 pound mixed media board. Let's get started. Since we're following the rule of thirds, that means that one third of the painting is going to be one primary thing and two thirds of the painting is gonna be another primary thing. And in this case, that's going to be colors. Bottom third of the painting in phthalo green. And the top two thirds of the painting in the yellow ochre. And then we will use the black as a highlight color. So phthalo green. And since this is fairly small, I'm gonna use my seedling marker for the bottom third of the painting. And just take some paint and make sure I get it along the edge. And I'm guessing this is about a third of the painting, so I'll just spread it down here. I like using these instead of brushes because I just like the texture that I get when they are spread onto the paper. Looks like I might need a little more phthalo green. I don't have to cover the whole thing here. I'm just kind of like in the mood. 
And if I go in different directions, I get different textures. If I, if I go flat, I get one texture. If I smooth it across, I get another. And I just like to play with this, it's kind of fun. So we've got approximately one third of the painting in one color. And as you can see, there's lots of different little variations in here because of the way the palette knife, AKA seedly marker, spread the paint. Okay, next up is the top two thirds of the painting and I'm gonna use the yellow oxide for the top two thirds of the painting. And this is the student grade paint. And since this is a little wider, I will use this plastic putty knife. Now the plastic putty knife isn't completely cleaned off, but it's mostly acrylic paint, it's all dried up. If I get a couple little bits and pieces from the putty knife, uh, color-wise on here, I don't care. It'll just add a little something. So I'll spread this on here. Ooh, and look at how cool that is, all those little dots. But I'm looking for more coverage, so I'm gonna cover up some of these little dots. Ooh, that's fun. It's just the feel of the paint when it comes across, when it's on the putty knife. It's just, I just love that. Luscious, luscious paint. Now you can leave this as bare as you want or make it as opaque as you want. I'm just gonna make it a little more opaque here. Put some more paint on my knife. Make this nice and thin. See how it's kind of thin over here, but it's thicker over here. That's cool. A little bit of different texture all over the place, but it's still the same basic color. That's kind of cool. Let me wipe this off. Now, here comes the next trick. I'm going to add a little more paint to the edge, just to get it a little bit thicker here, right on the edge. And you'll see why in a minute. For this next effect we're going for. And are you looking at this painting and saying, well, I'm, no, I guess it is a third and two thirds. If it's not precise, the world has not come to an end. The purpose of the rule of thirds is to make sure that not everything you do is 100% centered. Centered is fine, but it's not the only thing. And there's something about having a painting off-centered in these proportions that can somehow make it pleasing to the human eye. Okay, so there's that portion. Now, See, I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. And I could use the same, I can just use the same thing, it doesn't matter. I'll make sure I get a little extra dabs of green around the bottom here. Just extra dabs of green paint. I want more here. More green. Maybe even a little more green. Okay, and there's more, more green here and less more green here, but that's okay too, because everything doesn't have to be even. In fact, sometimes it's better if it's not. Now, I'm gonna take the cream coat black. And put some of that here on our seed label, or seedling label. 
see how much I can get here. And maybe take a little more and make a nice little stripey thing sort of down the middle here, but not 100% down the middle. And our painting is complete. That's all you have to do to make an abstract painting following the rule of thirds. Let's go ahead now and do another one. I will make sure that I follow the rule of thirds on that, but I'll add a little more to it to make it a little more complex and use a few more techniques, maybe. Let's see what we can do. Let that dry. Okay, another piece of 180 pound paper. And should I make my rule of thirds, should I make my one third and two thirds this way? Why not? Okay, and I can use different colors, but I think I'm gonna use the same basic colors with the green and the ochre, and then use some of the uh, black for contrast. We'll see what we can do. So, I will paint one third of this thing with the green, and I'm choosing the green as the one third because it's, it's a darker color and it just, takes up more visual space. I could choose the other, it doesn't really matter. And where's a third? Probably something like this, right? Okay. And this time I'm just adding, doing some weird funky texturing to it. Why not? And I'm really trying, I'm not thinking, I'm not, saying that I want a blob here and this blob there and this there and that there. I'm just wiggling around and trying not to think. So now we'll do the other third with, I'm still gonna use this tool. I find I get a lot, you know what? No, we'll use this tool. This is the metal putty knife and it's a real mess. It's got paint caked all over it that I haven't bothered to take off, but what the heck. Okay, and this time I'm going to spread it. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It doesn't want to spread, does it? No, because it's got an awful lot of texture on it from being... It's got a lot of texture on it. Now, if you'll notice, I'm going down here. Ooh, I got a little black in it, but that's okay. I am making this at an angle. So why would you do something at an angle? Well, that's another composition technique that adds interest and action and movement to the painting. If you want to add movement into an abstract painting, just put something at an angle. And then see how I am overlapping this third? Doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm making it at an angle to add some movement. I don't like that. Then I want to put this in. I'm just putting some lines in there, making some more textures, seeing what I can come up with, making sure I, I'm thinking I'm making things a little muddy now, so I'm gonna stop on that. And maybe I'll see what happens when I mix some, we we'll use my paintbrush, and mix a little tiny bit of teensy tiny bit of black into some of this yellow and see what kind of a green I can come up with or if it's any good at all. It's not any good at all. I won't use it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't want that. I guess I won't be mixing my colors together. Well, okay. So, I really want this to dry a little bit before I do anything else to it. Although, 
seeing as I'm a little impatient, I'm gonna take my serrated edge ceramic rib tool and put some black in here somewhere. I just wanna add some black in there and a little black up here. Why am I doing that? And then a little black down here. So the reason behind this is if you're gonna include a color in one part of the painting, sometimes it's good to move it all over the painting, but not in equal amounts. Now I'm gonna take this texture and I'm gonna spread this a little more. I just want it to be not in equal amounts, there. Okay, so now, of course, I could change the orientation. That's always, always, it's also always a possibility. I think I like it better this way. I, I need something more in the middle here. I'm just not sure what, and I think I might want to wait until we get some drying going on before we do that. So, let's just take a little break and wait for these to dry. Thing, I feel like I have a background here and I need something here. So the question is, what color or combinations of colors do I wanna use there? I think I wanna take the green and bring it up um, and I'll bring it up at not perfectly straight. Maybe I'll bring it up over here more towards the first third of this thing so that it follows the rule of thirds, sort of, so I can demonstrate that. And we've already got angles going here, like wind blowing, motion. We've got one third down here, two thirds up here. We've got some highlights that are spread, although not evenly, throughout the painting. So, now it just needs something right there. Um de dum dum. How are we gonna do this? And with what? Yeah. I mean I could scrape it, but I'm not sure I wanna scrape it either. Okay. And it doesn't have to be something big, it could be something small that's focal. Or I'm at that point that I sometimes get to in a painting where I'm afraid to make a move because I'm going to ruin it. However, this is the point where I have to realize there are many more paintings to be made in the future and there are many paintings that have been made in the past. If this one doesn't turn out or if I mess it up, I can either A, continue with it until it turns out the way I like it. B, put it aside for a while because when I take a fresh look at it, I might decide that I like it. C, tear it up and use it for collage material. Or D, in a fit of anger, toss it in the garbage. I have many options. So that means that I can go ahead and actually do something. So. Do I want to make a color that's sort of halfway between the green and the black? Maybe that's what I want to do. I want to make the green, but I want to make it super dark. So I'll put some green over here. This is phthalo green. And then I'll add in a tiny, tiny bit of the black. You're probably not going to be able to see the difference when I'm mixing the paint because it's so dark already. If I do that, it's it's hard to tell, but you can see that it's a it's definitely a darker color of green, which I kind of like. Maybe I just need a little more black and a little more phthalo green. So a little more black and a little more phthalo green. Now I have to remember that the phthalo green is a much stronger pigment than the black. The concentration is greater, which is why it's more expensive. What I'm trying to show here is it really doesn't matter if you use $2 for two fluid ounces 
or 12 or 15 dollars for two fluid ounces of paint you're still going to end up with a nice painting it's not in my opinion that much different although sometimes with the expensive paints you get some really cool colors and nice concentrations so let's see what i'm going to do here okay so i'm going to use this and i'm using the flat side and i'm doing a swish Woo. and another swish and my swish sort of ended up up the third of the painting and maybe a little uh, tiny bit of a, over there i think we're done okay i don't don't want to overdo it so i've got a lot of elements going into this painting design wise i have the rule of thirds one third down at the bottom two thirds up at the top i have the rule of thirds something coming right down here on the third line um, i am dispersing color throughout the painting i even have a little of this green mixed in up here and i have motion going this way and i've got sort of an angle going this way as well so that provides some motion to the painting and then i have angles going this way that provides motion to the painting in the other direction okay so let's wait for this to dry my other painting has really thick paint on it so it's going to take quite a while to dry and then we'll come back and see if we like the compositions as they are or if we can look inside these paintings for multiple additional possible compositions that we might like. That noise you hear? We have a proud mama chicken who just laid an egg and she wants to tell us about it for the duration of the video. So in order to save your ears, I'm gonna put it on silent. I'm going to take two pieces of map board cut into L shapes to try and find as many compositions as I can in each of these paintings. Some of them follow the rule of thirds that we've been reviewing in this video, and some don't. Some may be pleasing to your eye, and some may not. Since this work is abstract and not real life subject based, there are an infinite number of possible compositions. I find that I can learn a lot about how my eyes see composition by playing around with these L frames for a while. It's kind of fun too. So even though when I made these paintings, I tried to adhere to the guideline of thirds, which is what this really is. When it comes to the final decision, that's up to what is pleasing to the artist's eye, your eye.
So why don't you try your hand in an abstract painting using three colors of paint and the roll of thirds? Have some fun and ask me any questions in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to check out this quick video showing you how to make an abstract painting using stencils and spray paint. As an extra bonus, the video includes a link in the description to download a stencil template that you can use when making your own spray paint and stencil painting. And there's also a link to download a large five megabyte copy of the painting that I make in the video that you can have printed to hang on your wall, gift to friends and family, or use as wallpaper for your laptop or phone. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a share. See you next time.